Hello, everybody. Uh, it's been some time since I've made a video, but uh, given the current circumstances, um, I do have a lot of time, um, and I'm hoping to make a lot of videos uh, um, fairly soon. And uh, I do have a lot kind of that's been kind of going on in the background that I want to I want to put together a pretty comprehensive video series. But for now, um, I'm going to be doing some short videos, putting them on Instagram, maybe putting some short videos on. YouTube, some simple videos. Um, and today, uh, I just want to show you a feature in MetaHopper. Uh, this is a, a this is an add-on that you can download uh, at uh, Food for Rhino uh, and other places. So in this example, uh, this is a very this is a, a fairly large definition, and uh, it's getting it's pretty heavy for the processor. Uh, it's it's pretty processor heavy, so it takes a while to calculate. Um, to open this, and if I change something at the start of the definition, it will take about 10 minutes, actually, to, um, to make the full calculation. Um, so it's good to know where the actual bottlenecks are. It's good to know what components are uh, requiring the most processing. And we can, what we can do here is go to MetaHopper and then launch the bottleneck navigator. And we can use this navigator to, if we just zoom in, it will uh, show, it'll tell us, um, you know, the, the components that take the most time to calculate. And this is this one right here is actually taking five minutes. So that's about half the time. So if I want to be, if I want to edit things uh, before this, before this component, I, w I definitely want to disable that component. But even if I want to edit things, uh, if I just want to edit things that come way before this component, I can actually go and say like, Okay, I don't want anything to edit. Um, I don't want any. I don't want these three to uh, to um, take up any processing power f for now because I want to edit everything before that. I can find that. I can find those uh, those components, and um, I can just disable them. I can just disable everything. Um, everything uh, after that component, inclu including that component. And then I can just work on this, the definition before before that. Um, now you can obviously disable whatever you want, but it's just good to know which components are taking the most uh, resources and uh, making. It's good to know what which uh, components are making that calculation take the longest. Um, and so that's one option is is to disable them, because um, in this example, it's uh it's when I start extruding these. Uh, these triangle shapes. Uh, there's also triangle shapes that are are not shown right now. Um, that's when, and it's it's when I'm creating the boundary surfaces from the curves. That's when that's what takes the most calculation time. So I don't I don't really need that. Sometimes sometimes I just want to work on actually just this this shape in general. So then I know that I can just disable everything um, up until like around here or something. And I just want to work on you know this part of the script, and I just want to uh, refine the shape of this thing, and I don't want it to be calculating any of this. So I'm just going to go in and look and look at um, you know the most intense components are all boundary surface components, which is basically converting a closed curve into a, a surface, um, and those are taking the most calculation time and the solid union, which is expected, or the region union, sorry, which is expected. Um, and uh, but the other option is uh, we could integrate uh, data dams into this uh, script, which I'm not using. Um, I'm not really um, I don't really need to in this script, but I do use data dams uh, quite often. Um, and I can just show you a quickly uh, an example of you know if if you're not familiar with a data dam, I can uh, show you an example of what that would look like. So uh, um, I'll just I'll just make I'll just make a script. Okay, so we have this array of uh, circles. It's, uh, there's there's five circles in the array. Um, now, if let's let's say that um, let's say that we wanted to uh, turn this into we want to create a boundary surfaces uh, with this, and that means that we can um, extrude them into solids without having to cap them. It's a hypothetical scenario. Okay. 
Okay, so we've extruded them. Um, and, and let's say that we, you know, had like a thousand of these. Um, if, we're, if we just want to adjust the size of these circles or the number of the circles in the array, um, and we just wanted to play with it for a while for some reason, uh, without it, without having to calculate the extrusion each time. Maybe we don't need to see the extrusion each time. Um, we could, uh, we could just manually disable this. Um, okay, but the other thing that we could do is introduce a data dam. Um, do you like my spelling? Um, and now it won't push information through unless we hit the check mark. So the information is there, okay? But if we change uh, something, if we add, if we make it 10, um, everything before the data dam will calculate, but the, the dam holds back any information, and that means that this won't have to recalculate. So that's the key. That's the key thing. That's really mostly what a data dam is used for. It's so that anything uh, beyond the data dam won't have to calculate because we might just be like messing around with this for a while, trying to figure out what makes sense here. Um, and then we can push it through and then we can update and then we can just keep doing that, right? We can mess around with it. This isn't a great example because these shapes are getting in the way of our drawing, but that doesn't always happen. Um, and then we can update. So it, it gives us the ability to to tell to basically decide when we want to go through the process of <coughs> of uh, of of waiting for that calculation. In this case, uh, it doesn't make sense because the calculation is so quick. But like I say, um, like I said, I have I'm working on a model right now that takes five minutes or 10 minutes to calculate. Um, so it, it could make sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense for what I'm doing, but it, it almost does, it almost makes sense to use that. So yeah, that's that's all I had to show for, for that. So I just wanted to show you uh, the bottleneck navigator and, the, and, and how you could use it in conjunction with the data dam. So let me know if you guys have used it or if you have um, I, yeah, I'm curious to know whether you have different a different idea about what the data dam uh, is used for. Um, and uh, let me know any other cool meta hopper tricks. It's uh, something I don't use meta hopper too often, but it has some cool stuff in it. Um, I've only messed with a little bit of it, so I'd be curious to know what you guys have done with meta hopper. All right, I'll see you guys later. Hey, by the way, do you like the sound of my voice? Do you see, if you saw my last post, uh, I'm using the uh, patent pending uh, Ryobi drill mic stand. Um, I think it well, definitely sounds a lot better than my old laptop microphone. Hope you enjoyed.